they decide to abandon Sam Hinkie's strategy now? You know, I really do think it comes down to when we look at process versus results, and that's kind of the sum of all of Hinkie's thinking in terms of his team building strategy. You can have a great process, but really the day-to-day accountability of a team's results are what, in particular, an ownership group is going to be held up to. They're the ones who have to answer the questions. They're the ones who have to, to stomach the fact that their franchise only gets 47 wins in three years. And I think really the, the reason why Hinky is leaving the Sixers and why this is all kind of unraveled is just because as an organization, as a franchise, they kind of lost their mettle. They lost their stomach and their ability to deal with the extent of that process, with the depths of it, even if the approach in itself was sensible and was pragmatic in a lot of ways and in the grand scheme of things. I mean, if you want to build a championship contender, you need exactly the kinds of players that Sam Hankey was targeting. I think the Sixers ultimately just, they really didn't have it in them uh, to stick that process through. All right, so what kind of moves are you expecting from Jerry Colangelo? And we expect his son, Brian Colangelo, to be hired as well. What moves do you expect them to make to get the 76ers back to relevance? Well, part of the interesting thing is, you know, when Jerry Colangelo was hired, he, he made it clear immediately that the timetable of the team would be shifting, that especially this upcoming summer would be a, a big moment for the franchise, and they'd be looking to make some moves. I mean, that may have already been the case under Sam Hinkie, and it certainly looked that way, just given the way that some of the assets had matured, the way that some of the, the draft picks that they've acquired would convey. You know, Dario Saric, one of their previous picks, could come over as soon as this summer. Uh, so that, that was maybe part of the Sixers' plan and, and really in the scheme of things all along. I think the big difference is going to be just in the way that the team operates free agency, where under Sam Hinkie, really the only free agent signings the Sixers made were you know, undrafted free agents, were you know, minimum guys, guys that they could take a flyer on, that they could get under contract for a couple of years and really see what they have. And some of those paid off really well for them. Uh, others kind of came and went. But I would expect the Colangelo's to really be more – investing in the mid-market free agents, in, in veteran guys, and guys who could be a little bit more expensive, who could be on longer-term deals. Uh, just a, a really different approach in terms of the spending that the team has at its disposal, given all the cap space it has. You expect them to swing for the fences on a free agent? I mean, I think they'll, they'll take whatever meetings they can get. But at this point, you know, it, it was one thing where when the Sixers were deliberately trying to be a bad team, uh, I think it was really hard to get some of those meetings to get a lot of you know, big ticket free agents involved. Now the issue is, even if you're shifting directions, the Sixers really aren't in, in a period of their of their growth where they're going to be contending for a playoff spot anytime soon unless they make some really significant moves. I think getting the first guy on board is always kind of tricky. So I think initially they'll probably be looking for some more modest targets. 